Well, today I'm going to share a video with you that's really a little embarrassing, but hopefully it will help other pilots learn from this pilot's stupid mistakes. So here's the backstory. This is my first pleasure trip after four years of building an RV-10. It's a cross-country flight, and on my bucket list is to fly over the Grand Canyon. This is on the second leg. The first leg was from KBAZ out of New Braunfels, Texas, going to Roswell, New Mexico, where I stopped for lunch and for some gas. My second leg from Roswell, I was planning on flying over Santa Fe, then over Farmington, New Mexico, over Four Corners, flying Monument Valley, and then to DePage, Arizona, where I would attempt to fly the Grand Canyon in the next couple of days. So this video picks up after I had already passed through Monument Valley. The conditions had been low and bumpy for quite some time. Going through the area of Santa Fe, I had passed through or between a couple of rain showers. Conditions continued to look like they would deteriorate for a minute and then let up, deteriorate and then let up. So I felt confident because of the weather reports in Page, I was going to be able to make it the whole way. So here's the moment when things began to turn south. It was at this point that I could still see a little bit of sunshine peeking through somewhere. But I also had in my head, I might should turn back to Farmington and stay the night. But I decided to press on. The conditions at Page were supposed to be rainy all next day, and I really wanted to make it in there this day. So I got a little case of get there-itis. Always a bad thing for a pilot. This is where I made mistake number one. This is the moment I should have turned around. But I could still see the ground, and I had just convinced myself it was going to be temporary. So I pressed on. Not a good decision. This is when I decided to get help. You see me looking up frequencies for the closest ATC center. I was flying through Denver Center, so I dialed in their frequency and attempted to make a call. Denver Center, this is Experimental 783 Victor with you. Here you see me trying another frequency. When you get no answer, every second feels like a minute, <laughs> and every minute feels like an hour. I had gotten no response, so I thought I'd try something different. Denver Center, this is Experimental 783 Victor with you. I finally got a response. Uh, experimental, I think it was 783 Victor looking for five phones. Uh, negative. I actually need to get clearance. I got caught in IMC. Uh, I'm at 10,300 trying to get into Page, and I got covered up with some clouds. Okay, I understand, sir. Um, uh, but you don't have a flight plan on file, is that correct? I do not have a flight plan on file. I am uh, IFR rated. And it's 1079 or kilo? Uh, 783 Victor. 783 Victor, I was close. 783 Victor, squawk code 6565 and uh, the page altimeter 2964. All right, 2964. 83 Victor, I see out there about uh, 25 miles east of the page airport. And uh, I can clear you IFR right there up to 12.5, or if you can make a turn to the southwest just a little bit, maybe 10, 15 degrees, I can leave you at 10. Okay, yeah, I can uh, turn 10 to 15 degrees. 11 grade 3, Victor, you copy that? Uh, okay. Yes, uh, turn in, uh, let's see. Turn in to uh, 189 right now. What heading do you want me on? 83 Victor, about a one, uh, 120 or so will do it. And to just verify you got your transponder on, squawk code is 6565, I understand you're busy. At this point, I had finally calmed down just enough to aviate. I was flying the plane straight and level and on heading at the right altitude. So right now, I'm just trying to settle some nerves. Hi, right, Denver Approach, uh, 783 Victor's back with you. Got my bearing straight. I'm going uh, direct page right now, and I guess I'm looking for the uh, 15 Approach in the page. At this point, I get no response. And I thought, well, 
Have I lost communication? Not a good thing when you're dependent upon ATC to vector you in to get you down safely. This irritating noise is me trying to mute the squelch of my radio. When you mute the squelch, it makes your radio more sensitive. So I'm hoping I'm just on the edge of his reception and I'm still trying to get in touch. Number five, Papa Kilo, Emerson, Roger, descend and maintain flight level two six zero. Let me know when you have the current Montrose weather approach you're expecting. Remember, every second feels like a minute. Every minute feels like an hour. Number five, Papa Kilo, reaching flight level two six zero. Clear direct gauge you. Number four, Echo Alpha, contact Aston one two three point eight here. Denver approach, 783 Victor, do you read me? Uh, November 83 Victor, go ahead. Uh, yeah, 83 Victor is direct uh, page, and I guess I need to set up for the 15 approach, please. Deck car 328 Denver Center, descend and maintain file level 200. Number 83 Victor, are we looking for the visual at 9000, or, or do you want to set up for the uh, RNAV approach from the north? I don't know if I can get visual. Uh, I think the clouds are going to keep me out of visual right now. Yeah, three Victor. Yeah, I'm showing the layer scattered 6,000, ceilings broken 7,500. Turn right, heading 330 for now. I'll try to check over Roscoe if you want to get that loaded up. All right, right to 330, and then I'll get loaded up. Uh, loaded up for the 15 approach, is that correct? Yeah, I believe Roscoe's the initial. Let me take a look, and I'll get right back with you. Number 83, Victor, uh, just verify, have you had a chance to pick up the current page weather? Uh, negative. Uh, let me do that real quick if I can. At this point, I'm still feeling behind the airplane. Normally when I fly IFR conditions, I plan 20 minutes in advance of anything. At this point, I feel like I'm at least 60 seconds behind on everything. Visibility 1 zero mile. Layer scattered at 6,000. Feeling broken 7,500. Now, I may have missed a small opportunity here. As you can see, I can see the ground now. There is a hole in the clouds. But I was unfamiliar with the terrain, and I really didn't know if I went lower and tried to go in visually what terrain may, may jump up to get me. So I just decided to continue on with ATC's guidance to get me down to the airport. November 783, Victor, I understand you're uh, pretty busy right now. What was your departure airport? Uh, I came out of New Braunfels, Texas, uh, KBAZ. Okay, 783 Victor, and could you just, if you have time, quickly give us the fuel on board, the souls, uh, souls on board, fuel remaining in minutes, the color of the aircraft, and a, uh, a phone number for search and rescue purposes if you want to. Yeah, these questions are always a little concerning. Let me interpret them for you. How many souls on board? How many bodies we looking for? How much fuel? How big of a fire truck do we need? And search and rescue questions. Like, how in the world are we going to find you in the middle of nowhere? That's just for search and rescue purposes. I just want to have to get, gather that information. We'll get you set up over Rasco for the straight in here in about two or three minutes. Fly heading of 305 now. 305783 Victor. All right, November 83 Victor, clear direct Rasco intersection, cross Rasco above the Niner Thousand, and your state approach to Page Airport. So, this is when things got really interesting. You hear those noises? That's my autopilot kicking off, my airspeed indicator going blank, and my yeah, stall warning horn up here. going uh, off. So, my airspeed just went out. All right, a couple of things going on here. First off, look at the left-hand screen. I'm again in a bank. I'm forgetting to aviate, and I'm trying to figure out what in the world is going on. The other mistake I made is the reason I lost airspeed indication is I forgot to turn on a thing called pedo heat. My pedo tube had iced up. But I live in South Texas. I haven't had to turn on pedo heat in 15 years. So this really caught me by surprise, and in the moment, I really had no idea why things were failing. All right, 175, 783 Victor.
A3 Victor, uh, thank you, and uh, if you can make that a right turn for my higher terrain, um, that'll help out. Make it a 180 heading as soon as you're able. All right, I'm sorry. What? What? Uh, uh, tell me what heading I need to be going right now, please. By heading 180. No. 180. By this point, I had figured out I was in a bank, had straightened it up, yeah, and now I'm being asked to turn again. So I'm concentrating on trying to aim you, but again, very hard to concentrate when you got all these bells and whistles going off. The next thing I start to do is to try to figure out what is failing. Because okay, at this point, I thought it was an equipment failure, not a pilot error. You can maintain 9,000 safety. That is my minimum IF route in that area. All right, 9,000 to 180. November 585, Papa Kilo, change to advisory. Report your cancellation downtime with me this frequency. At this point, I still don't I know what's wrong. But I decided I had an equipment right. problem. So I start pulling some circuit breakers, and I'm trying to reset some of my equipment. I'm thinking maybe it's just a computer glitch in one of these pieces of avionics, but that didn't seem to help. I don't know what it is. I've, I've lost my airspeed, and it's just squawking at me like I'm at stall. This is when my training kicked in. One of the things my IFR instructor taught me was that if you had the proper power, and the proper pitch, you know what your plane's performance is. That has stuck in my head forever. I knew I had power. I knew I had the right pitch. So I knew the stall was not a stall. I knew that I was flying straight and level, and I just needed to concentrate on aviating the plane and then trying to figure out what was going wrong. I'm showing your uh, airspeed across the ground, 141 currently. I know you're not showing that on your instruments, but 141 across the ground is what I'm depicting. Roger that. Thank you. Damage at 873, contact Denver Center 127. Okay, at this point, at least I got the buzzing to stop. When I reset the equipment, the buzzing did quit, but I still had no airspeed indication, and my AOA indicator was still showing I'm in a stall. Another minute elapses, but look at the switch I just pushed. That's when it dawned on me. I'm in freezing temperatures in the clouds which have moisture. My pitot tube had frozen up. Piloting 101. I just now realized it. As soon as I hit that switch, it took less than 10 seconds for me to get my airspeed indication back. My blood pressure went way down in that moment. Okay, November 8th, Victor, no problem. The airport is at your, uh, as you make the turn, going to be about 1 o'clock and maybe 7 miles. Um, just call the field. When you get it in sight, we can put you on the visual. Roger that. I'll let you know when I get it uh, in sight. We'll go visual. 73, Victor. I do have the airfield in sight now. November 783, Victor, cleared visual approach to the Page Airport. Cleared visual for Page. 783, Victor, thank you for your help today. I'm sorry for all the trouble. 783, Victor, that's our job. Uh, change over to advisors now. You can talk to uh, advisories there. Just report your cancellation and downtime with me this frequency. I can be all the way to the ground. Man, the runway has never looked so good to me. Forget the fact that they were reporting a 70 degree gusting to 25 knot crosswind. <laughs> that was the most beautiful runway I had ever seen in my life. Oh. That, my friends, is the sound of relief. Denver Center is Experimental 783, do you copy? And somebody else called on 2755, say it again. Uh, yeah, this is 783 Victor. Just call me, I'm on the ground and safe. 783 Victor, we'd like to hear that. Thank you very much. We'll close out the flight plan and have a nice day. All right, thank you again for your help. I really appreciate it. Okay. Though it's embarrassing to go public with your mistakes, I hope another pilot will learn from mine. Please don't get, get there, itis. Turn around. If you get caught, aviate before you navigate. And please remember the pedo heat. I also want to thank the Denver controller that helped me out. He played a big role in me getting on the ground safely.